All right, so good afternoon everyone and welcome to the day three training program of ours. I believe everybody settled down and my audio is also reaching. You are able to see my screen as well. Do you please confirm someone? Yes, sir. Great. So as discussed, today we are going to start working with some real time data when you download from SAP or ERP, how to read our data properly, how to present our data into a beautiful dashboard, or how to turn multiple reports from the same source data and present it with some IKG presentations to the people and having more information on the data and giving more life to the data, we can say. We are going to discuss that. So go to our sample case studies folder. There is a file naming called data analysis. Data analysis. All right. So now you will be finding this kind of data sheet. You will be getting naming called summary table. Okay. So finally confirm the same Excel file and the sheet name called summary table is on a new screen. Why for yes. yes. Okay. How about others? Now, so let's have the basic understanding. What is the data we have and what is the objective and what are going to achieve out of this? Let's first discuss about it. So let me put it in a scenario format. Suppose say morning nine o'clock, I drop into office and my boss called me. Prabhas, please come to my cabin. I need to discuss something with you. Well, so I went into his cabin and immediately he started saying that Prabhas, I was going through all the monthly reports. It seems that there is a quality of information missing. It seems like as if we have re ready-made numbers we have downloaded from our SAP or ERP and we are trying to present as it is. So let's do something different this time. Now, what kind of difference he wants to do? He is saying, just get me last three years mm -hmm. revenue data from SAP and let's do some more exercise or add on to the data and present it with more informative way. This is what boss is asking. So I give my respective T code in my SAP system and I download a data set. So near about one lakh line item, approximately something it has come over here. So what kind of data like we have got customers? We have got different different product types and these are the products we are manufacturing and these are the salesman names we have engaged to generate the revenue or boost of the sales. These are the different regions we have exported our products. Order date is nothing but billing date, invoice date. You can consider sales in terms of US dollar we have. You can consider INR, GBP, anything, that's fine. Year of incurrence of sale, month, quarter, and intermediate channel partner, if any, that name is also available. So it's a huge data if you look at it. Now, when I presented this data to my boss, he's not happy. He is telling me, to us, this data is of no use for me. You keep it with you. What I want is, a simple report out of this. What kind of report? Whatever the products we have sold to our customers during last three years and how much revenue we have made, I want to see that. So if you see the larger picture, what it seems, we have a huge volume of data and boss is expecting a summary out of this or data should be in tabular format or there should be a crispy presentation having all this information. All right. So we know when you want to summarize your data, we have a beautiful data summarizing tool called pivot table or pivot table. But here people always commit a mistake. They do not 
feel for a while also they do not realize for a while they do not ask a question to themselves whether my data is ready for pivot they don't pay attention to that and that leads to a lot of trouble but going forward we are not going to commit that mistake anymore so the first thing first whenever you happen to create a pivot out of any structure of data in microsoft excel you must satisfy three validation rules rule number one the data must contain a field header. Without field header, pivot is not possible. So if you would, field headers or column headers are not there, you must name it manually, column one, column two, and so on. And none of the column headers should be duplicate. So if you want to retain customer in two columns, you can, but you should name it as customer one, customer two, or some different name. So there should be a unique column header name. Now, rule number two. The amount of data, whatever we have captured, received or downloaded from our SAP or ERP, you need to ensure that there should not be any blanks at all. So how to consider, how to come to know that we have blanks or not? I told you in day two, we have got a very beautiful option in data clean one exercise, like what is that? Selecting the data, do it along with me, selecting the data, control G. So you'll be getting go to dialog box over here. Then special. So when you click special over here, it will take you to your go to special dialog box on the screen where you have the option called blanks. Nothing new. We have already discussed all these things in our day two. And once you select and click OK, with immediate effect, you will be finding a message from Excel window that no sales were found. So it's a simple message or confirmation for us that in our data set, there is no blanks at all. So I, I guess you must be receiving the same. Have you got that? Right? Now, rule number three, ensure that at any point of time, your data doesn't have a merge cells because most of the time what it happens, we have a very bad practice. We select multiple cells, we merge them and we define a header. That's meant for display, not for the calculations. So it is always better avoid using merge cells because it will be very difficult to trace it out if you have any merge cells at any point of time. So. Having said this, now our data is ready for next level. Now, what you need to check next, if you remember in day two, I told you, whenever you download the data from SAP or ERP system, there are two areas you always find the trouble. One, our column, which is containing the numbers, will not be in number format. The column which contains the date, it may not be in date format, and we have to ensure that before proceeding further. So take a look at our data. We have a order date, you can see. So keep your cursor in the first date of our order date column and select the rest. Then you need to come back again. I told you a keyboard shortcut, control backspace again to come to the beginning. Now we need to ensure that our date is there in proper date format. If you remember in day one and day two as well, I told you any point of time, if you want to convert any format to date, what was the keyboard shortcut? Anybody quickly? Any format to date? Control shift hash. That is three. Control shift three. So immediately you can notice the respective format is changing. Yes. So we are confirmed now. Since our date is in proper date format, that's why these options are changing. Format is changing. So this is the best way to confirm whether our date is in proper date format or not. Hope it is working. Control shift three. Nothing new. We have already discussed all these things. Any difficulties? Now, coming back to next. Sales USD column. Keep your cursor in the first invoice value 
and select the rest. Again, to come back in the beginning, control backspace. So now we need to confirm that our column is containing the numbers and it is there in number format. So I told you again, if you remember in day one in data presentation sheet to convert any format to number format. Any format to number format, anybody? Control shift, exclamatory mark. Yeah, that is control shift one. So when you go for control shift one, can you see decimals are coming up, post decimal two characters are there, comma separator is there, all these things are happening. So since the set changes are happening, we are confirmed now our numbers are there in proper number format. But there is no point having post decimal zero zero null value characters. So to remove the same, what you can do, we can either go to home tab and decrease decimal twice. You can two tabs you can do. Or I told you a keyboard shortcut, Alt H9, Alt H9. So whichever it is comfortable for you, you can do that. But ensure your column is not having any kind of null value or post decimal zero zero characters. So this is how these two columns is very, very essential to check before proceeding further. I believe all clear so far. Yes, no. Fine. Now, coming back to next, I'm going to take you through one more problem in our data set. Kindly stay focused. What I'm highlighting, just check. So I have highlighted three columns: order date, year, month. If you look at what is the problem, our order date, if you look at it shows it is of Jan month, but month is showing December. Technically not possible. Our order date year is showing 2019, but here it is showing 2014. So this is also not possible. So this is what the problem in our data. How to rectify the same? So let's go and keep our cursor in our first year value of our year column. And I told you in day one how to extract a year from a date by using a year formula. Ready made? So equal to year and take the date, order date. And the moment you hit enter, you got your first year rectified. And same we can apply for the others. We know how to do that. Simply double click on the fill handle and our year is rectified. Right. Sir, how to apply it for all the columns for the entire column? Double click on the fill handle. The so drag button, double click. Okay. Hope it is working. Yes, sir. Right. Now we'll go to our month column. So we'll rectify our month also. So I told you in day one itself how to extract a month from a date. It seems no one has practiced. This is the word, the reason why I was keep on telling you in day one and day two as well, people. You have to practice hard, else you'll be back to square one. So this training, whatever your time you are investing, money you are investing, it will go in vain. See, this is the reason why, because you will be needing all these things. What I told you in day one, all these daily routine activities, whatever the formulas we use, I have told you in day one itself. So. Don't you think that I have told you the formula which helps in extracting a month from a date? What was that? Text formula. Text. Tell me now. Tell me now. I have not told you. Yes. So equal to text, what I need it is asking value. Value is nothing but my order date. Order date, comma. What is the next thing it is asking? Format text. I told you what is the date format we follow? DD, MM, YY or MM, DD, YY. Now focus is in our month. So month purpose within two double inverted quotes M four times. And what is the significance of typing M four times to get the complete name of the month? What if I go for three M's only first three characters of the month name? What if I go for two M's only two characters? That is number about our month name. So this is how we have already discussed about all this significance of typing M four characters. And I told you it is not case sensitive. 
you can write caps on or you can go for drop caps as well. Now, hitting enter, you got your first month rectified. The same you can apply for this. Double click on the fill handle. So kindly confirm your month column is ready. Yeah. Now, once we have done with this next step, our data is ready for next level. So what you need to do, select your data anywhere, anywhere you keep your cursor, control A. And then convert your data into table. And I told you in day one, what is the shortcut for converting the data into table? Anybody quickly? Sir, I have an error in the previous. Sorry? I have an error in the previous uh, presentation of the month. Okay, what is that you are getting? Can I show, uh, can I share my screen? Yeah, you can. But this is pretty sure that you have not practiced. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So problems will come. So this text. text. Yep, tab. Uh, value so is date. Comma. comma. Double mm. inverted code start. Not single code twice. Not single code twice. Shift double code once. Yeah. MM four times. Then double code close. Yeah. Enter. Oh, yes. Now okay. same you can apply for others. Double click on that fill handle. Drag button double click. No, no. Okay. Keep your cursor first in Jan. Keep your cursor in Jan. Then double click. Okay, thank you. Art is ready. Now convert your data into table. So I told you a keyboard shortcut to convert your data into table and what it was. Control T. Very good, Rose. Control T. So keeping your cursor in the data, control T. So it will take you to a dialog box, something like this, and go and click OK. So you'll be finding your data has been converted into table. Only data, not the entire worksheet. Only data has to be converted into table. So here people blindly, they go for selecting the whole worksheet without knowing this, and they later face the trouble, system gets hanged, pivot is not working, all this complaint they do. But they never realize for a while what they have done. So you have to very precisely convert your data only to the table, okay? Now, having said this, our data is ready for next level. Now, first two to five minutes, people, how it is so essential, for preparing a pivot, we have got the basic understanding. Now, once it is ready, keep your cursor anywhere in the data, go to insert. So when you go to your insert menu, you could see the very first option you have pivot table. And there are two sections in the pivot table. I'll tell you to see one last thing. See, this is called icon section. This is called navigation section. So don't go for navigation section to check any data from this. Always go for the icon because if you try to go to navigate and there you choose as a table, some features of pivot will be missing. So I don't want you to face any kind of trouble. So better you should go and click on the icon. So going to insert pivot table and icon. It will take you to a dialog box, something like this. Yeah. And now it is asking. 
where you want to place this pivot. It is always there better to go for new worksheet. So no need to do any changes. Let it be. Click OK. Sorry. When I click OK, you will be finding that a new Excel sheet will be generated and towards your left, you will be finding a gray color box, something like this, where a pivot table is going to generate. Now, in this box, you could see a small gray color box. Their name is called pivot table one. It's a message. Whenever you create a pivot table, it will be containing a unique name, and this is how you should read your data. Now, towards my right side, if you look at it, there is a box where you could find the entire field headers listed over here from our source data. This is called pivot table field list box. And towards my right, you could find again small, small boxes kind of structures are there. These are nothing but our pivot table field area. So we have only one job now. Whichever the field we want, the same. We can go for over here, drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop. This is the only action we need to initiate. But the problem is, if you look at it, my layout is not matching with yours. Can you see that? The right side window, whatever the layout is there of mine, is it matching with yours? No. Or yes. Definitely no. So now the question is how to get this kind of layout. Because this lay this kind of layout, if you work with, it will be giving enough space to work with, even though there are another five to ten fields. If it turns up also, my space is there enough to carry it out and it should be accommodated in this window without any hassle. So that's why how to bring this kind of layout. That is our first job. This is a one time task. What you need to do, you could notice there is a settings button in this pivot table field list box will be finding. So there you go. And when you download, I mean, when you just click that drop down arrow or navigation button, you will be finding an option. Second one, field section and area section side by side. OK, so ultimately what is going to happen? You will be going to get exactly this kind of setup. So this is how we have understood how to get the primary things done whenever we happen to prepare a pivot. Kindly confirm. All things are clear so far, whatever we are doing. Okay, so Nino has confirmed. How about others? Fine. Now, what you need to do is, as I told you, you need to go and get the fields and drag and drop. Yes, that we know. But if I drag a field, where to drop? I have got four different choices, right? So there is also a rule you need to follow. What is that? I'll tell you. If you see in the value field area, a sigma option is there, correct? So this is nothing but a simple message. Whichever the field you are bringing it on, if it contains a numbers or numerical value, you must populate in the value field area. Reason being, if you bring it over here, you can play around with your formula and function based calculations. That's why this field has been designed. So like some count, average product, minimum, maximum, all these kind of formula functions you can apply in this value field area. Now let's focus with the report what my boss was asking. What he asked, last three years revenue data. 
revenue data means billing column. Billing column means invoice value. Invoice value means sales USD. Is it containing numbers? Yes. So what is the right field area to place with? Simply drag and drop it in the value field area. Always go for drag and drop. Don't make a habit of just simply clicking on this checkbox. It will not go to the desired location all the time. So it's better always have the control upon your fields and drag and drop. All right. So sales USD, it has come to the value field area. Now what my boss was expecting last three years revenue data. So do we have a field called year? Yes. So take this year field to the columns. So you'll be finding you have got the data in three columns ready. Now you can ask me a question. Because is it really mandatory? I should go for columns. Can't I take it to the rows? Yes, of course. You can take it to the rows also. So what will be happening? You will be having all this entire three years revenue data in three rows. So it's based on the need or it's based on the requirement or it's based on the expectations from the other side. But why did I pick year? The reason is being there because I have something else to bring it to the rows. Now, what is that exactly? My boss was expecting whatever the products I have sold during last three years and how much I have made. So I'll take this product description field to the row area. And now can you see a beautiful pivot report will be populated having a total of three one triple nine two five three kindly confirm. Fine. Anybody is not getting or any difficulties or anybody is not clear. All right, so I believe we all are in the same page now, though our data is ready people, but we cannot send this across to the next level. The reason is, as I told you since day one. When you are presenting your data, Make sure your data is a bit of lucrative designing or a bit of formatting. You have to also care for that, right? Because people also notice all these things. So if you look at our pivot, the look and feel is not so great. So what you can do, keep your cursor anywhere in the data. Go to design. There is an option or tab called design in your ribbon menu, extreme right. So the name may be options or they may be design depending upon the versions of Microsoft Excel. OK, so go to the design tab. OK, over here and you can notice we have got many more styles over here. If you go for the more tab, it opens with three broad categories, light, medium and dark. This is nothing new again. We have already seen our day one format as table option. I told you what, what is the style you should opt all the time, light or medium. Why not dark? Anybody? I said not to use the dark color. What is the reason behind that? Because the more the dark colors, again, file size will be more. So always keep the things in mind and take always light or medium. Suppose I took one medium category out of this. Now, if you compare the previous people table and now if you see so much, it is looking better. So once you do all these things, as I told you in day one, whenever you have multiple columns in a table, the first column alignment should be always left. The rest of column alignment should be always center. Now leave your month column or <clears throat> this first column, select the rest of the columns and go for center. 
And what is the keyword shortcut for making it center? Alt H A C. Or you can take the help of mouse going to home, alignment group, center you can choose. Now, once we made this, if you see this Bolt, Genix Nano, Hexa, Indica, these are nothing but our products. But the problem is, if you look at the table header, it shows row level. Similarly, 2019, 2020, 2021, these are our years, but it is showing column levels. So this is again major drawback of our pivot table. It always takes a generic name, something like this. It never capture our ready-made field headers, whatever we have in our source data. So it is our duty now to bring the same, but how to bring it? Our experts, they will suggest you go and edit it manually. Go and edit the field headers manually. Never ever do that. Now you will not be finding any kind of impact, but tomorrow when you learn Excel VBA macro and you automate your entire pivot report, there the macro will stop. It will not work since you have changed the field headers manually. So this is the place where how to bring the field name. I'll tell you a very beautiful trick. Just see. Keep your cursor anywhere in this particular data set. Go to design. Go to design. OK, from the left, third option, report layout. Report layout. And when you go for report layout within that, you have an option called show in tabular form. Show in tabular form. So when you go for showing tabular form with immediate effect, you will be finding your column headers as it is being populated. So product description over here as it is, year as it is, it has come. So what is this option? Report layout, show in tabular form. So these are the minimum formatting. OK, minimum formatting you should do whenever you prepare a pivot. Now, once it is there, <clears throat> as I told you, when you present your data as it is, nobody likes a lot because nowadays the audience is having a different level of expectation. So the question is over here, how to present our data in a beautiful story format? So keep your cursor anywhere in this grand total column, any of the cell you can choose over here. OK, go for right click and there you choose. What is that option we have? Sort. And when you go for sorting option, you have an option called sort largest to smallest. So once you choose sort largest to smallest with immediate effect, you can see a beautiful story turns out. What is that? From the entire products during last three years, we have got maximum revenue from Indica and the least revenue from Jest. 
So whoever in the audience side what are sitting there and watching my data, they can make out what I'm presenting. And in case of my absence also, anybody from my teammate is presenting the data, people are not going to struggle in reading the data or understanding what I'm saying, correct? So this is how we have understood how to create our first pivot table from any structure of unwanted or unstructured data, doing the necessary formatting, doing the necessary checks with the respective columns, converting the data into table, plotting the pivot one, then doing the necessary formatting in the pivot table, and over there, bringing the exact field name of the column headers, and finally presenting the data in a beautiful story format that we witnessed. So this is about our first pivot table. Any doubt, any queries in our pivot one people? Uh, sir, just yep. uh, one question. Instead mm -hmm. of year, if we take date, uh, how it is uh, there as it is, then uh, the pure table will work or how it will be? Yeah, it or will we work. We calculate uh, year and then apply pure table. Don't worry, we'll deal with that. That is coming up. When you have a date related field, how to present your data in pivot, we are going to discuss that. Don't worry. Okay. So let us have because the flow. We can see, uh, if we uh, put date, then we will get year, month, quarter. All these data comes with uh, year date. I know, I know, I know. So that is not the right way to present it. I will tell you the better option. Don't worry. So when the time okay. comes, I'll tell you. So just Thanks. please okay. wait for okay. that. Yeah. Thanks. Now, sheet one, if you see the first pivot table is there in the sheet one people. So do one thing, just double click on sheet one and name as it is the way I'm doing. Pivot, bracket open, one, bracket close. Right now, once this is done, now what is the next thing you have to do? See, ideally, how do you drag your sheets? Suppose pivot one is there in my left side of my summary table data sheet, correct? Now, if I ask you, please bring pivot one exactly right side of your summary table. What you do? You drag it like this, isn't it? So same thing you have to do, but holding the control button. I repeat. Same drag options you have to use, but holding the control button. So holding the control button, the moment you drag automatically, you will be finding a clone of your pivot one will be turning up and automatically it shows the pivot two. Just check it out. Have you got your pivot two ready? Right, people? Happening? Now, pivot two. Let's discuss what else we can do with regard to pivot table. Now, stay focused with the ask for the problem statement. This is what I have presented to my boss. 
my boss is quite happy and he's telling me because this pattern is really good giving this entire three years data and three columns and all the products in rows this pattern is good and i'm able to analyze the data but you have given me only the three years data yes i want to do some deep dive analysis or macro level of analysis upon the same so boss is asking he wants to do some deep dive analysis now what is the meaning by deep dive analysis along with the years i can analyze the data based on the month also and that is what he's expecting so first thing first do we have a field called month over here yes now take that month field and put it in the row area and with immediate effect you will be finding your pivot structure changes can you see that when you bring your month into row area All right, so now take a look. Just watch my screen, no need to do anything. Whenever you are presenting your pivot table people, just remember one thing, each and every pivot table, they have their own unique story. So before presenting or sharing to others, you need to first understand what kind of story your pivot is going to give it to the people. So first here, let's have the understanding. My boss asked me last three years revenue data. Did I give? Yes. Along with this, he asked month-wise data. Did I give? Yes. But as a larger picture, if I see, if I'm sitting in the audience side and I'm looking at my pivot table, what I see is my data is still emphasizing upon the product. Though month is there, but it becomes secondary. Product is still playing the primary role. And my boss has never emphasized upon product when he was demanding the report. So this is the place where it has gone wrong. So basically, how to present our data matching with exactly the expectation just see in our row area the very first field we have called product description now take that field put it below to the month just exactly below to the month or take month put it above to the product description choice is yours whichever it is and the entire report structure changes can you see last three years revenue data now month becomes primary product description becomes secondary so this is how people simple interchanging the field we can turn into a beautiful story about our pivot and this is how you have to play around with your column headers and you can see or finally take a call which setup which layout is exactly matching with the requirement you can take a call of that check it out all these things are clear working Now, once we have done with this over here, we did now, turn on the. Uh, Archana, could you please keep your mic on mute? Yeah, thanks. So now, once I have done with this, now no problem, Archana. That happens. It's okay. So, when I presented this, my boss has now come to the area of our data. So he's giving the focus now on the data points so when he's watching the data he could notice there are many more cells blanks are there so immediately he asked me a question Pravas, why there are so many blank cells over here simple reason in that particular year with regard to that month with regard to that particular product we have never sold any product to anybody in that period that's why it is blank that we know 
since we are dealing with the data, but people will not be knowing. They will be asking questions and we have to keep explaining. And that is what the place where we are wasting our time. So now what you have understood, whenever you prepare a pivot and a pivot contains this kind of blanks, it is our duty to replace all these blanks with a predefined text, either zero, hyphen, nil, not available. Then only we can stop people asking unwanted questions. But how to do that? Find and replace will never work. I'll tell you a very beautiful option. In pivot, anywhere do the right click. Anywhere you do the right click. And over here, you'll be finding from the bottom second one, pivot table options. Pivot table options. Click that. And with immediate effect, you'll be getting a dialog box on the screen. And in this dialog box, you'll be finding there is an option called for empty cell show one box is there, right? So in that box, you can write anything as a replace text. So I would suggest go for zero because we are dealing with numbers. So when you type zero in that box and click OK, with immediate effect, you will be finding the entire blank cells, whatever we had in our table of data. Is it filled with zero text? What we have defined? Check it out, confirm. All right, so here now once I have done with this, looking at the data, nobody is going to ask further any questions because that is self sufficient to present the story. But here, if you look at just watch my screen, suppose my boss started reading the data one by one product he's reading out. And the moment he is reaching to Tiago, the product, he is unable to make out which month that product is pertaining to. Then again, he has to go and look back in this area, then only he realizes that this is of January month. So this is the way nobody wants to read the data and my boss is also not happy. So what he's saying, he's saying, Pravas, why don't you just fill the entire month column with the month name so that at any point of time, if I'm there with a particular product, I can make out which month that product is pertaining to or belong to. So basically what we need to do, we need to fill this entire column with the month names. How to do that? If you remember in our day two, we discussed something about data fill. In regular intervals, when you have the blank cells in place, I told you, you got to select your entire column. Then you have to go for control G, special, blanks, then OK, equal to previous cell, control enter. This is what we learned the other day. So that is quite lengthy process if you're working with your normal Excel sheet data, but we are in pivot table. Jobs is so easy. Just see how I'll tell you. Keeping your cursor anywhere in pivot, go to your design tab in the extreme right of your ribbon menu. And from the left, we have report layout. The third option, report layout. And within report layout, you'll be having an option over here, naming called repeat all item labels. What is that? Repeat all item labels. And once you just click that with immediate effect, you will be finding your entire month column is filled with the ready-made month names. So this is called repeat all item labels. Check, is it working? All right, so now pivot two, whatever we did, I believe it's clear. So let's have a quick recap what we did. We have understood how to take more than one field and prepare a pivot. If necessary, how to interchange the fields to turn out to a different story. How to deal with our blank cells in pivot table. 
what is the role of repeat all item labels that also we have understood so this is about our pivot table number two now let's do one thing keeping the cursor in pivot to sheet tab holding the control button drag it to the right so one more pivot turns up naming pivot three Now, pivot table number three. What else we can do? Let's have a discussion. Once our report is work is over, suppose say my boss is watching and he's saying, Pravas, I'm done with the product. This report pattern is very good, really. Last three years data in three columns, month-wise data in one column. So let, I like the layout. So layout will be, I don't want to change, but I am done with the product. I am no more interested of seeing the data about products. But what I'm interested in is about the customer's data. So now, the boss is expecting what customer-wise analysis, but what he doesn't want that product description. So first go and remove the checkbox from product description. Then what is expecting customer? Do we have a field called customer? Yes. Take that and put it in the row area. Take that and put it in the row area. So now you see the whole story changes. When you bring customer to the row area, product description is out, customer is in. Hope you have got the same structure. Finally confirm. All right, now let's discuss what else we can do with regard to our pivot table number three. See, if you look at our first customer, who is that? Al Hamid Automobiles, correct? Now, suppose say my boss started operating with the data, he starts analyzing the data. Now, suppose say he's interested to see, to see the data of 2019. Now, Al Hamid Automobiles, Jan, some business is there, okay? No business. Some business is there. Yes, we have some business. Good sign. Now, if you go to March, there's no sign, no name of our customer, Alamid Automobiles. So like April, May, June, he wants to see, he has to scroll down 12 times or more than that could be the case. So this is what nobody likes to do. And my boss is also not interested in watching the data in this pattern. So what he's saying, he's saying, Pravas, you have given me a data, no doubt but it is not giving a comfort zone to work with. So why don't you make it very simple in such a way, when I open the file, the entire story should be there in the screen. So how to make such kind of precise report? Let's discuss. So first thing first, over here, if you look at in our row area, month is there, correct? Take that month and put it in the column area. And when you go to the column area, you could notice how many columns you have generated. No doubt, all the customer names appears at once in one column. But if you look at the total number of column, how many columns we have generated? If you see, total 41 columns. Now the question is, how to present our data having 41 columns like this? First thing. Now suppose say, my boss has never seen this. He asked me, Travis, while coming to my cabin, get me a printout how to take a printout having 41 columns. Definitely, this is not going to help. And people are not interested in reading the data in this pattern. So now the question is, what is the best way to present it? I'll tell you, a beautiful option. Just start working with me. 
If you look at our column B, B for Bombay, if you look at our column B, there is an option called 2019. SL is naming called 2019. Now, keeping the cursor over here in the 2019, then right click on that. You have an option called expand and collapse. And when you go to expand and collapse, you'll be finding the very fourth option, but it shows collapse entire field. So when I go and click OK, you will be finding the entire three years data just in do collapsed. By creating some radio buttons in place. OK. Now, what is the benefit of doing this? Suppose say my boss asked me to show me 2021 data. I can go to the plus symbol, this radio button, and when I click, only 2021 data alone will be expanded or displayed on the screen. So unwanted data, I am not explaining the screen. Unwanted questions are not going to come up, and immediately, whatever the delivery items, I can deliver it over there. Right now, once our presentation is over, if I need to restore my data, again same plus symbol. This is called radio button. As I said, you if you click, the data will be restored. So this is how we have understood how to present our data precisely effectively over there, taking the data from our sales vertical, or you take it about from your SAP or ERP and you try to operate with that, all these things you can do. Check it out, is it working? Any doubt, any queries? Just ensure one time practice you are doing in training people because that is very, very essential. And if you have any difficulties, do let me know. Right. Now. Whatever we did, people over here, anybody can do that. It's not a rocket science or something extraordinary. We did it. But if you remember, I told you always try to make something different so that people would be happy watching the presentation. So how to make something different over here? So let's go and do it. First of all, keep your cursor next to grand total. Right? And there you type the name called visual. Do you remember in day two, we discussed about so many visuals like our data bar, icon set, spark lines, all the things we discussed? Now, to give a feel that this visual cell is the property of your table, now keep your cursor anywhere in, anywhere in the pivot table. Okay, this area, headers area. Or say you can say, take an example, you can put it across in the grand total, the cell you can select. Then going to your, over here, home tab, you have an option called pen brush. Okay, and now if you click on that, there's a paint brush kind of stuff that is called format painter and go and click this visual cell. So same formatting will be applied, adapting the same format and giving a feel that this is going to be the property of pivot table. All right, so you got the same format, I believe. Right, now once this is done over here, our first customer's three years data, just select only three years data for first customer. Don't select the customer name. Don't select the customer value. Only select the name of the customer. Sorry, the three years data of customer. I'm sorry. All right, now go to insert. If you remember in day two, we discussed different, different types of spark lines. There's a group called Sparkline, and there are three different types of Sparklines were there, line, column, or winner loss. Now, 
Now, going to that line spark line. The other day we went for column spark line, but today we are going to use the line spark line. So when you click on this line spark line, it will take you to a dialog box, something like this, asking, where is the data? Data is already selection. Now it is asking over here. Where you want to place your reports or exactly where you want to showcase the report in terms of visual is the location you can keep your cursor and go to that visual column for cell, like just exactly against of that first trial. Go for Now, so when I go for this visual column for cell and click OK, with immediate effect, it will be giving more or less a line graph kind of stops. And along with that, if you notice, there is a spark line or options or design, a tab will be activated depending upon the version of Microsoft Excel. Okay. And in this spark line, if you look at towards your left side, can you see an option called markers? Checkbox is not on, so you have to activate this. And you see there are three pointers added in that line graph. And the same, we can apply for the others. Double click on that field handle. And now, when I go for double click here, it will not work because this is not a data driven over here. This is just sparkling driven data. So you should go and drag it manually for other customers. Now, trust me, when you present it, people will love to see this and this. Nobody's interested in reading your data like billions, millions, lakhs, and crores, and they cannot remember even. So that's why they will be remembering the visuals. Now, what kind of story it is giving to us? See, Alhamid Automobiles, if you say compared to last year, this year, it is maintaining the consistent. But Arya Motors, what is happening? They are showing still growth. Good sign from the company perspective. Then if you look at Bavaria Motors, it is going down. So you need to check why there is a decline of revenue over here. So this is how you should always analyze the data and trust me, if you necessary also, you can take it to the presentation area and turn into a meaningful slide. Check, is it working? Any doubt, any queries? See, nobody's going to demand all these things. From your side, when you present it, definitely your presentation is going to be better for this. And somebody is definitely going to ask a question. How do you do that? That's what we want. People should ask us, how do you do this? Any difficulties, anybody? Is it working? If you need my support, do let me know. If it is done, kindly confirm in the chat box. Y for yes or D for done. All right, now pivot three, what we did, we are clear. Now do one thing, holding the control button, drag it to the right, you got pivot table number four. Right people? Now this visual column doesn't play any role. You can select from the column header, and go for control minus. Or you can go for right click delete also, whichever it is comfortable for you.
All right. So now. Customer work is over. You can remove that. Month work is over. We can remove that. Right. Now the very first pivot table, whatever we had designed, like product description in the rows, bring that. Nothing new. This is what the first pivot table we had designed. Now let's discuss what else we can do with regard to pivot table. Hope all are ready with this structure. You know, Isha, Manisha, what is the status? So my screen's frozen, so I'm just watching. Okay. Uh, sir, actually, hmm. my pivot table fields that is not showing. I don't know why. Okay. Keep your cursor sure. in the pivot. Keep your cursor in the pivot table. Okay. Is it showing now? No. Okay. So right click on the pivot table anywhere, right click on the pivot table anywhere. And then in the bottom, you see it is showing show field list. Yes. Click that. Now it's showing. Yes, yes. So Thanks. you should have asked, you should have asked me. All these things are missing. Don't skip. That's what I told you. Because yes. one time practice is very, very essential. Whenever you have any problem on your screen, something or the other is missing, please stop me there. I will help you out. Thank you, sir. No problem. All right. So who is not able to see whose screen is frozen? Is it Manisha or someone else? Isha? Whose screen is frozen? Manisha, is it yours? So it's fine now. OK. Fine. Now, once we have got it, now take a look what else we can do with regard to pivot table. Suppose this is what the last three years revenue data I have presented to my boss. My boss is also watching and he's telling me because you have given me the revenue data. That's fine, but I want to know while generating this much of revenue, how much incentives we have given to our people. So technically in the corporate whom we pay the incentives to the salesman, to the sales agent or to the sales people whom we have paid. Boss is not interested in knowing that how much we have paid. That is what he wants to know. So first thing first, check. Do we have a field called incentive? How to know that? Today I might be having 10 fields. Tomorrow there might be 100 fields. So the best option to go and search box and type incent or some keywords with regard to incentive. No incentive field. So our problem starts. We do not have the data. All right, so let's take a hold on this. So we do not have the data. So for the timing, assume that in our. Company or organization or the industry, wherever you are working with, we have a global policy. That whoever the salesman, how much revenue or the billing he does or whatever the invoice he is raising, the invoice values entire 2%, he will be entitled for incentive. So this is a global policy in our industry. We have assumed that. Now, having said this, if I need to bring incentive over here in this particular pivot table, how to bring that? So since we do not have the data, we do have a choice. We can create our data and we can bring it to pivot. But where to create our data in the source data sheet? If you go to our source data sheet over there, what is the last field we have? We have got channel partners. So we'll keep our cursor next to channel partners and we'll be creating the name. So what should be the name of the newly added field? Should be incentive. Yes.
Now, what would be the formula? Equal to taking the data from our sales USD. So when I go for sales USD, you could see automatically it is taking the format and we know we have seen in day one itself. These are the table format and it automatically takes its format. We don't need to go and type all these things, isn't it? Then multiply. What, how much is the percentage we discussed? We have got 2%. Now the moment you hit enter, can you see the whole column is being populated with the entire formula based answer and how it is happening all these things because we have converted our data into table. So now can you feel that what is the reason behind converting our data into table when you prepare the pivot? All these things will be happening. So kindly confirm you have got your incentive column ready in your summary table or source data sheet. Now the same we have to bring it to pivot. Now keep your cursor in pivot table number four and you will be finding below to channel partners. We do not have incentive field populated. No worries. Keep your cursor anywhere in the pivot table and now right click upon the same. And you notice there's a very beautiful option naming called refresh. So when you go for refresh option with immediate effect, you will be finding your incentive field is going to be populated. Now incentive field, what type of data it is holding? It's the numeric and we discussed when you have numbers in place, what is the right field area to place with? Should be in the value area. So let's bring incentive to the value field area. And once you drag and drop, you could notice there is a beautiful column is turning up with total incentive. Along with that, year wise incentive also being populated. See the beauty? Even though we do not have the field, we can create the data and can bring it to pivot table. So this is how month and month base when your data is being populated and your column is being expanded. You don't need to worry about with a simple right click refresh. Entire data will be forming part of pivot table, but how this is going to happen because we have converted our data into table. If you have missed out to convert, then you have to go for manually doing the same. How? by going to pivot table analyze, going to change data source, and you have to again click on this so that the newly added field has to be forming part of our pivot. That will be very lengthy process and that will be a duplication of work. So now with this, by converting the data into table, a small automation, we did it kind of. All right. So how to get a newly added field over here with a simple right click refresh? We got that basic understanding and that the store of our pivot table number four. Now let's do one thing. Holding the control button, drag it to the right pivot four. It will turn out to be pivot table number five. Pivot table number five. And our incentive work is over. You can remove that and just ensure you got your structure back like this pivot five. So any doubt, any queries in pivot for people, anybody? Or anybody is not happening, you need my support, do let me know. Great. 
Now pivot table number five. Let's discuss what else we can do with regard to pivot table. So please stay focused on my screen and follow my audio and uh, try to understand what's the next ask from the boss or what is the next problem statement. Suppose say I have presented my incentive. Boss is also quite happy and he's telling me because I'm done with incentive. Now what I want to know is during this last three years while making the billing, how much discounts we have given to our customers? I want to know that. I repeat, boss wants to know in the adjacent column billing amount versus discount amount. Well, check it out. Do we have a discount field? Fine. Now, we do not have this discount over here, isn't it? Now, let's take a call. We do not have the data, but like incentive, a global policy in our industry, we do have for discount as well. Whatever the billing we make, the customer, whatever the unit they purchase, though it is a small unit or bulk unit, irrespective of any units he's purchasing, he will be or she will be entitled for. 5% discount. Suppose say this is a global policy we have in the organization. Now, if that is the case, then how to prepare it? How to get our dis discount column over here? Yes, people, can anybody give me some opinion on this? Whatever you feel. Same way we can add discount column in the base data. OK, that's a good one. As Archana said, we have the option. We can go back to source data. Don't do that. Don't do that. We are discussing. OK, so going to source data, creating a column called discount, applying the formula, then applying the entire formula for the whole data set, then bringing the pivot table by simply right click refresh, again populating the value in the value field area. This is how the whole story we can do or we did it. But how long it takes for to do the job? Roughly two to five minutes. So one end, our five minutes of quality time is being spent. Besides that, what is happening? When you go to your source data, create a new column like incentive and apply the formula for one lakh row items, your file size is also getting heavy. Do you mind that? Yes or no? Though we did the operations to get the answer, but what we did, the drawback I told you. So what we did for incentive calculations people, though our experts suggest like this, but Microsoft Excel never recommends for that. <clears throat> so now the question is, without creating any kind of source data, how to create a discount column in the pivot itself, and that is going to be the property of pivot table, that's what the objective. So what we can do, just see. Keep your cursor anywhere in the pivot table. Go to your analyze or pivot table analyze. One option is there. 
in the ribbon, just sing. Right now, when you go to that pivot table analyzed or analyzed depending upon the versions of Microsoft Excel, you can see there is an option called fields, items and sets. If this option is not visible, it may be in their calculations group depends. So group name is calculation. Option name is fields, items and sets. And when you go and navigate through that, you will be finding one option called calculated field. And when you click that, it will take you to a dialog box where you could find the name is over here. So name the newly added field name, what is supposed to be that we have to give it. It should be discount. I give it. Now the formula box, whatever is written, please delete that because we are going to design our own formula over there. So going to the formula box over there and Below to that, you'll be finding the fields are there. In this fields option, can you see one but option called sales USD? Our billing column is there. Yes. Double click on that. And when you do double click with immediate effect, you will be finding over here that field is being populated in the formula box automatically. Then go for multiply. What is the percentage we discussed? 5%. And the moment you go and hit 5%, rest of things are fine. Go and click OK. So when you go and click OK, can you see a beautiful column is ready along with naming called total discount? And with that year wise discount also it is given over here. So that's what the beauty when you look at and the field is automatically turning to the field header name called values. So we don't need to go and separate and do the job. And this field is going to be the property of your pivot table data. And Moreover, if you look at our source data, there is no such kind of field called discount. So this is called your virtual field or calculate field people. You can keep, keep creating n number of fields. There is no restrictions. And how to do this job that we have seen. Just check it out. All these things are working. Any doubt, any queries? All right. <clears throat> so now what is that takeaway from this? What do you have understood? That whatever we did for discount, we could have done for incentive as well. Do you agree with me? Yes or no? Yeah. So now is there any questions in our pivot table number five people? Anybody? In this calculate field, is there any doubt or query? Right. 
since you did not ask any question, I will let you know something which you may come across is suppose any point of time you have designed a calculate field like this, like say 5% discount you have taken. Now boss is looking at the data and he's saying, Prabhas, why we are giving 5% discount? We are selling the premium products. There is no point of giving that much of discount. Reduce the discount percentage from five to one. So if that is the scenario, how to edit our customized field or calculate field? So here, no need to recreate the entire process people, but yes, to edit the calculate field at any point of time, what you can do is you can go to pivot table analyze, same option, fields, items, and sets, and calculate field. Now, can you see over here in the name field area in the right side, there is a drop down. So this will be giving you the entire list of calculate fields, whatever you have designed. So we have designed only one discount. Then the formula will be displayed. And what boss is expecting, how much we're supposed to provide the discount is 1%. So instead of five, go for 1%. Then there are two options called modify so that the existing field will be updated. If you do not like that field, you want to delete it completely, you have to click the delete. So all these options you can control from this point. Now, what is our objective? We should modify. And once you modify, click OK with immediate effect. So discount value will be changing from 5% to 1%. So this is how people we have understood whenever there is a need, how to use calculate field, and if necessary, how to edit the calculate field, we got the clarity. Any questions? All right. So I believe pivot table number five, whatever we discussed, is it clear? Fine. Now, do one thing, taking pivot table five, holding the control button, drag it to the right. You got another pivot table naming pivot table number six. So pivot table number six, our discount is over. You can remove that discount field over here from this point, people. Right now, what else we can do with regard to pivot table? Let's have a discussion. Stay focused with the ask again with the problem statement. Now, suppose say this is what the pivot table I had designed and I have presented to my boss. My boss is quite happy with the pattern, the way I have designed it. He is telling me, Travas, you have given me only one pivot table. Yes, this is only one pivot table. But what I'm expecting is salesman wise pivot table, something like this. So what is my salesman wise pivot table? Like suppose say we have got 100 salesperson. My boss is expecting 100 pivot tables like this. If I have got 200 salesman, my boss is expecting 200 pivot tables, something like this. So how to do that? This is really a tedious process and definitely people would be demanding at the year end. Mostly we need such kind of reports like vendor wise reports, product wise reports, customer wise data or salesman wise records, country wise data, month wise records. So sometimes we may be in need of that. So without doing copy paste work sitting at one place and spending your whole day or a week how to do the same job with no time. So the objective is how to export our pivot table report into multiple reports on a clicker button. Just say, first thing first, based on which field my boss is expecting multiple reports is salesperson. So salesperson, take it to the filter area. Do it along with me. Salesperson, take it to the filter area.
Now, you can notice above to your pivot table, one salesperson filter is added. Now keep the cursor in that filter box. Now, once you've kept it the cursor over there, you can notice we have a pivot table analyze. Now go to pivot table analyze and the very first option you have pivot table within that pivot table name is there. Right now below to pivot table name, you'll be finding one options tab. Don't click the options. Next two options, you will be finding a small navigation button. So click on that navigation button. And when you click that navigation button, you got three options open on your screen. Options show report filter pages and generate get pivot data. Go for the second one, show report filter pages, and you will be getting a dialog box on the screen where you could notice your salesperson is selected. Yes, and this is what my boss is also expecting, salesperson wise data, absolutely. Now just click OK and see the beauty on your blink of your eyes. Your pivot table will start exporting the data into multiple reports. Having the patterns remains the same. Salesman name is already filtered on the filter box. Sheets are also renamed with the salesman. See, all these things are happening on a click of button. So that's what the beauty, and we call it as a life savior option of our pivot table people. Trust me, I have seen people literally sitting and doing the copy paste work at the year end. So if you know the tool properly, any point of time, you can export your data product wise, vendor wise, customer wise, month wise, cost center wise, anything you want, you can do that. Check it out. All these things are happening. So any doubt, any queries in pivot table number six people, anybody? Is it working? Exporting the pivot table data into multiple reports? So all good so far, people? Can somebody confirm me? Great. Now let's go for keeping our cursor in pivot table number six, holding the control button, drag it to the right. So you'll be getting another pivot naming called pivot table number seven. Now, in pivot seven, we have done with our salesperson work. You can remove that field. Now we'll see. Sometimes what is happens, people, there is will be, I mean, there will be a need. We need to present our date related records in pivot table. 
like purchase order date, work order date, invoice date, date of joining of the employee, anything you have like this, then those date related stuffs, how to present it in pivot table effectively, we are going to discuss that. But before that, let's remove the unwanted fields from our pivot, like product description, you can remove. Year, you can remove. Just retain only sales USD. Rest of fields, you can remove. Now, if you look at our field list, there is an order date one field is there. This order date field, okay, you bring it to the rows. And when you bring it to the rows, you'll be finding a ready-made structure of your pivot table, something like this. So this kind of ready-made structure, it comes only if you are there in 2016 and above versions of Microsoft Excel. If you are in 2013, the output would be different state. But yes, this kind of ready-made output, nobody prefers to see because it is quite confusing. It is not giving the clear picture as expected. So how to present it effectively? I'll tell you. Keep your cursor in one of the year, one of the year, and right-click upon the same. You have an option over here called ungroup. What is that? Ungroup. Now, when you go for this ungroup option with immediate effect, you will be finding entire existing structure will be neutralized and it will be landing up with date wise records. But this will be running in pages and this kind of output is not going to help us. So what you can do, select one of the date. Select one of the date and right click upon that. You got an option called group exactly above to ungroup. You got an option called group. Just go and click this group button. And on your screen, you'll be finding. A dialog box. Something like this comes up where the first inverse date and the last inverse date is being populated. Yes. Below to that, you will be finding there are the categories. Month is already in selection. Yes. Go for days. Just above to month, we have a days select. At the end, if you see, there is an option called years that also you select. I repeat, months, days, years should be on. <coughs> now, click OK. So when you click OK, you can see a beautiful hierarchy of your date records, year-wise, month-wise, day-wise records. So this is how, whenever there is a date related fields to be presented, people, now we got a basic understanding how to present our data effectively. So somebody was asking me whether uh, Manisha or Archana, I guess Archana. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. So now you got the understanding how to present your yes. date records effectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. All of you are clear, Isha. You know. Yes, sir. OK, great. So pivot table number seven. Any doubt, any queries? All right, 
Now pivot seven, whatever the story, we are clear with that. Let's do one thing. Holding the control button, drag it to the right. Pivot eight will be turned up. Now we'll see what else we can do with regard to pivot table. See, here, one thing always keep in your mind, whenever you go for date related records to present in pivot table, it will generate two additional fields for you, like months and years. These are not your real fields. These are your virtual fields, which is generated out of the date column. So any point of time, if you happen to analyze the data, years and month wise data, something to analyze, do not take these options. Do not take these options. If you take it by mistake or unknowingly, the entire pivot value will be different. So your real time field, what is that? These are your real fields, year and month. So whenever there's a need, take all this. Don't take this months and years. This is one thing you have to keep in your mind. All right. Now, once your date records are over, remove these fields, our months, years, all these fields you can remove. Then bring product description to the rows, the very first pivot table, whatever we had designed, and bring year to the column. Fine. Now let's have a look what else we can do with regard to pivot table. <clears throat> now here, try to understand one concept. This 2019, 2020, 2021 and grand total, if you consider anything, okay? The values, which is billions, millions, lakhs, crores. Maybe my immediate boss would be happy watching the same. But when I'm presenting my data to the management, what they're expecting? If you remember day one, I told you. Can anybody recall that? Just to remind you, if you recall, we discussed something over there. I'm showing you. Do you remember? I told you our management will be interested only in seeing the data in terms of percentage, isn't it? All these things we discussed in day one. So now we are going to bring the same in our pivot. But how to bring that? Ideally, to bring this kind of value in terms of percentage, what our expert, the suggest us, you know, they will ask, Pravas, you can do one thing, go for equal to this indica, where it is, it's in B5. So go for B5 manually. Why B5 manually? Why not selecting the cells? If you go and select the cell, it will take some lengthy functions like get pivot data. Doesn't help. That's why they will ask you go for manually type the cell divided by which cell grand total grand total is in which cell B16. So I'll go for B16 and then this B16 should be locked because when you copy this formula towards down, total cells should not move down. Well, and the same we can convert into percentage and we can apply for others. This is how our people they will suggest you. So 2019 value in percentage, similarly identical two columns you have to create for 2020 and 2021 as well. No doubt that gives a perfect answer. But what do you believe? Is it going to be the property of pivot at any point of time? No way. 
Now suppose say I have presented something like this to my boss and tomorrow my boss starts play around with some fields. He just remove or he adds some more field. What is going to happen with this column? This will remain as it is, right? This is no, never going to give a dynamic answer over there. So there is no point taking the data, presenting something like this. So being there in the pivot table itself, how to present those additional information so that we can make our pivot more informative. Just see. There, for those kind of reports, people, you have to do a little bit of adjustments on your interface. Now, what kind of adjustment from us? See, there are two types of grand totals in our pivot table. One, this is called row wise grand total. Her entire row, each and every row wise total is there. So that's why this is called row wise grand total. This is called column wise grand total because each and every column wise total is there. That's why I call column wise grand total. So basically the report what we are discussing, row wise grand total is not playing any role. But how to remove that? You cannot remove or delete a particular field in pivot because all the fields are integrated. It's interlinked. So what is the choice we have? Only thing is we can hide. But if you hide a column after D, what we will be finding F. So definitely people will come to know there is something hidden. So this is not going to work also for us. Now see, I'll tell you a very beautiful tip without hiding the column. How to remove this grand total? Just see. keep your cursor anywhere in this pivot table data. Go to our design tab in the extreme right. From the sec left side, second option deals with your grand total. And when you look at your grand total in the bottom, you will be finding on four columns only. Click on that. And once you click, can you see your row wise grand total? Is it now disappear? Right, people, kindly confirm. Fine. Now take a look. Just one minute, watch my screen. What I'm doing, observe. Next one minute, I'll be giving time to try this. Okay. See, if you look at in my screen, in our value area, we have taken a field. The name is called sales UST. Sum is the function, but field name is sales UST. Perfect. Now, what I'll do now, <coughs> I will take this sells USD one more time into the value field area. Now it will be taking and creating a field called sum of sales USD two. I'll keep the cursor over there in that field header. Right click on that and there is a beautiful option we have got show values as and when I go to show values as from the top third option, it deals with percentage of column total. And if I do so with immediate effect, you will be finding each and every column wise data is turned out to percentage. And is this showing the total of 100%? Yes. Now I can change the column header as revenue percentage. So this is how people you can notice the data which is not actually existing, but we can create a customized field for the same. So how to do that? I'll tell you. So first sales USD, we have to bring it over here. Then step two, select the column header. Right click on that. Then go for show values as and then go for percentage of column total and you'll be getting 100%. Check if it is working. Confirm, please.
Great. <clears throat> now what else we can do? Say, take an example. My boss asked me, reverse this 2019 Indica, whatever the value you are showing, is it of one invoice or multiple invoice? Definitely multiple invoice because pivot is always showing the aggregate value. So now my boss is saying, why don't you show me the number of invoices raised during that year for those products? So number of invoices or count of invoices, we do not have such kind of fields, but how to create that? Just say, again, watch my screen for a minute. I will take this sales USD one more time to the value field area. And then again, one more field turns up. You can notice sales USD two. If you have not renamed the previous one, it will be named as sales USD three because it should contain the unique name. So I'll go to the column header, right click. There's an option called summarize values by. By default, you see a sum function over here. Click mark is there, but I'll choose count. And immediately you will be finding number of invoices will be there. So now I'll change the field name called invoice count over here. Right, so give it a try. What do you need to do? Fine. So is it working? Could you please confirm? We got revenue data, revenue percentage we have computed, and inverse count also we have calculated. <coughs> well, Archana has confirmed. Ishan, you know, what is the status, please? Fine. Now let's do one thing. Just watch my screen. Though we got all these columns, but do you believe that this is the order we can retain the columns? So after product description, if you see out of these three columns, which one is supposed to be next to the product description? The columns what I have highlighted after product description, which one is supposed to be? Very good. So it should be inverse count as column one after product description, followed by inverse value in terms of numbers, followed by revenue percentage in terms of percentage. This should be the order, isn't it? But how to make it? Very simple. You can go to our value area. If you look at inverse count, is there in the end? There is a small navigation button is there. You can click that 
And there's an option you'll be getting called move to beginning. What is that? Move to beginning. And ultimately, what is going to happen? The order is going to be changed. So after product description, invoice count, followed by sales USD and revenue percentage. So this is how, if necessary, you can interchange the fields in the simple drag and drop also you can do, or you can go to navigation button and change the order. So this is all about our pivot table number eight people. Any doubt, any queries in pivot eight, anybody? Now let's do one thing. Holding the control button, just drag pivot eight towards your right side. One more pivot turns up, naming pivot table number nine. Now from this, remove this revenue percentage and invoice count. Fine. Now, if you look at our row wise grand total is also missing. How to bring that? Same option, where to go? Keeping the cursor in the pivot, going to design in the right side top corner, and then grand total from the left side second option. And within that second option, if you see, it deals with on for rows and columns. So this option you have to enable, and ultimately you are going to get your row wise grand total over there. So this is how we got our structure back. Kindly confirm you have got the same structure, people. All right. Now save all your files. With this, we'll go for a short break of 10 minutes. OK, so in my system 48, I can say 410.420. Again, we are going to catch up. So have a brisk and come back soon. We'll discuss the rest.
All right, so I believe everybody's back. Can we respond in the chat box? Why for yes? All right, so now come to our pivot table number nine, and we are going to discuss a beautiful concept of our pivot, like how to design or create a dashboard. So dashboard now, which is hot cake in the market, wherever you go, whichever the industry you are working with, when you take a bunch of files and try to present it to the audience, they definitely don't like it. So rather they would be expecting you should present your data in very precise fashion, maybe in one page of report or one file report, and that's we call it as precisely a dashboard. But dashboard is a quite broad term. When you talk about uh, dashboard, there are different types of dashboards you'll be noticing. One is formula driven dashboard. Second is the macro dashboard. Third is your pivot table dashboard. So we are going to discuss one dashboard called pivot table dashboard. OK. Now, when you go for dashboard. There are certain things you have to keep it in your mind. Some minimum elements like you have to take the help of objects. And objects should be alignment should be pinpoint accurate. And those objects must contain some high definition colorful buttons. OK. Now. How to create such kind of dashboards in pivot table? But before proceeding further and work with it, let me give you some feel of real time dashboards, which you'll be also having some clarity what we are up to, what we are going to achieve, and how does it look like? So next two to five minutes, people just watch my screen. You don't need to do anything and have a feel of the dashboards. OK. So I'll take you through first one a beautiful HR related dashboards over there on the screen. Watch my screen. So this is called a beautiful sophisticated dashboard of one of a client from HR department. So what is the element we have? Multiple charts, graphs, everything, line, pie, column, bar is there. And we have some statistical data in terms of numbers also is available. Entire department is there, name is there in one box. Wherever the city is having the offices, that name is also available. Last nine years data we have taken to analyze that list is also there. And whoever the employees working in the organization, that name list is also available. So everything is there in one page. How it works, I'll tell you. Just watch my screen. Suppose say you want to know in IT department last nine years, what was the head count? So if you go and choose IT, automatically this chart is going to change. So focus on the chart. I'm changing IT. Is it changing? Yes. Now if you want to know in IT department, Los Angeles City or New York City, suppose say, in IT department, New York City, what is the headcount trend for last nine years? So this is going to change this chart, what I'm reflecting or highlighting over here. So IT department, New York City, this is what the status. Now, if you want to know in IT department, New York City, during the year 2004, what was the breakup of salary? So here, this is going to change, and based on that, this chart and this chart is going to be changed. All right, so IT department, New York City 2004. Is it changing all this too? Yes. So this is called a sophisticated dashboard. And this needs time. It's not just overnight put the formula and get the answer. But this is just one time investment. And once you do so, next time onwards, only thing is you have to keep updating your records. That's it. And nowadays, 
this kind of dashboard designing people, they are getting it outsourced. Companies, they hire the consultants and they pay the hefty amount to get this done. So each and every dashboard purpose, they spend somewhere around 25 to 30,000. Now just imagine, at least if you cannot do like this, 50% of this work, if you're able to do, that will be a great achievement for the company. And that will be a great asset to the company also. Now how it works, I'll tell you. You must have nine years data. It's not a joke. You must have that. Then only you can play around with it. 90% calculations is nothing but your pivot table calculations. Since afternoon, whatever we have been doing, everything is over here. One more sheet is just to maintain periodically update over here. Anybody leaves, anybody new joins, or any department name has been, I mean, new department name has been introduced, or a new year data has been pushed over here. All these things periodically, I just need to update in the back end of this sheet. This is the sheet I have to update. And this sheet is always ready. I no need to touch that. So this is called a sophisticated dashboard. Okay. Now, one more dashboard I'll show you about a sales dashboard. Just see, if I go for sales dashboard, how does it look like? See, this is again one more sophisticated dashboard of sales department of one organization. Now, how it works, if you see there are many more charts, graphs, everything is over here. And we have got month details, product categories, all these things. OK, now suppose say as a company's chief marketing officer, Maji, suppose I want to know like what is the status of Eastern Zone? I can go and click East and automatically the entire data belong to or pertaining to East Coast region will be reflected on the screen. Suppose say I want to know in Eastern Zone, what is the performance of my Jenny Paul salesman? If I click, this is the status it is going to turn up automatically. So everything is happening on a click of button. So more or less, we are going to create something like this. All right. So hope you got a clarity now. What is dashboard? What we are up to? What's it? Yes, no. What is your perception? Is it going to help you? Whatever I showed on the screen, do you believe it is going to help you? Okay. Fine. What happened today? All the people have left again. OK, no issues. Good. So if you believe Ajisha said she is having that, definitely it is going to help you. Archana, what's your opinion? If you know how to design this kind of dashboard, is it going to help you? Uh, yeah, Prabhas, sorry, sir. Uh, actually, my internet was gone for uh, more than maybe. I disconnected and I joined again. So second no dashboard you explaining. So that yeah. time I got connected. No problem. So my objective is hmm. if you know how to design such kind of dashboards, if you learn the techniques, is it going to help you? Yeah, it's really helpful. Actually, I'm working in, uh, in the project management process. So right. it would be very helpful for me. Actually, I wanted to learn that. And what right. we are doing for the require means for the creating dashboard and reports, we are going to Excel experts and we are charge giving chargeability to them and we are uh, getting it done from them because okay. of uh, I'm, I don't know that how to do that. Right. So now going further, you are going to design your own dashboard. Don't mm, worry. Yeah. So let's go and start working with it. Stay focused. So mm. first thing first, Whenever you happen to create a dashboard people, you have to take the help of multiple objects. And those objects alignment has to be pinpoint accurate. And you must take some high definition colorful buttons over there. OK, I'll show you one more dashboard, which I am working currently for one of my client. Just for information, nothing else. 
see what you can do in Excel. I'm just going to tell you the potential of Excel. So you don't need to go for any other tool to design any kind of dashboard. People are not using Excel properly, but they talk about what dashboards in Power BI. So use the tool properly. So I'll show you one uh, beautiful dashboard over here. Uh, OK, yeah. So this is the ongoing project almost in the finishing stage. So this is again one more HR dashboard of uh, one pharma industry. See how it works. If you want to know a particular region, how is the status? If I click, the entire thing will be turning up like this. If I want to go for the, all the regions and only for the month of July, then it will be turning up like this. On a click or button from the left side, only the button clicks will be there. How many males, how many females have attended the training? And people are in the ratio, the thing will be turning up. So this is what you can also do. It's not something a rocket sense that you cannot do. But only thing is you have to invest your time for practicing upon the same. All right. Okay. Now coming back to our data. First thing first, keep your cursor above to your pivot table area. You could see some blind rows are there. Keep their cursor and insert a row. Alt I R. Insert a row, Alt I R, one by one. And then to repeat the last action, go for F4. F4 or function F4 depends on your keyboard behavior or the shortcut what you have. So we got some blank space created, OK? So anything is missing anywhere, you just stop me there because we need to work together and we have to confirm each and every step. So blank rows, 10 to 15 blank rows, is it created? Sir, it is not happening on my screen. Yes. On your screen, OK. What is happening then? Should I share my screen? Yeah, yeah. I'm not able to share. No, what's the problem? See, next to the mic button, you have the share button, correct? Do I have to select window? Yeah, you have to select. No, 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 don't select the window. Is share the screen. Screen, screen. There are two options. Window or screen will be there. Select the screen. Entire screen. Yes. Okay. Is it now visible? Yep. See, uh, you are in the editing mode. That's why it is not working. Hmm. Keep the cursor there out. Huh. Now click. Now click once a level. Yes. Anywhere in the above. Yes. Alt I R one by one. Alt I then R. No, 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 no. See, one uh, by one, I said first Alt remove the finger, then I. Then remove the finger R. Okay. You're pressing something else. I have to remove Alt also, finger from Alt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remove the finger from Alt as well. Then R, just R. I after that R. No, you, no, 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 no. See, come out of that cell, come out of that cell. Okay. Now go for Alt I R. Okay. Yes. Now repeat the last action, F4. Press F4. In the top line, yes, keep it in, keep it in F4. Okay. And 10 to 15 blank rows you create. But that's, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Don't go much. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Fine. So I'm taking the control back on the screen. And now just watch my string. Okay. And here, 
once we have got enough blank rows, some 10 to 15 blank rows created over here. Now keep your cursor anywhere in the pivot and go to pivot table analyze or analyze tab, whichever it is showing on the screen, depending upon the version. And there you have the option over here, naming called insert slicer. In analyze or pivot table analyze, insert slicer. Right now. When you click insert slicer over here, you will be finding. All this field headers, whatever we had in our source data. Is it getting listed over here? Yes. Now what we need to do is. You have to follow a rule when you go for a slicer. What is the rule says you have to first look at your pivot table in pivot table. What are the fields you are taken? First have a look at that. We have taken year product description and sales USD. Those fields again you should not choose as a slicer in the slicer box. You should not choose that. Apart from those three fields, anything else you want to analyze, say you want to see customer wise data, select customer. You want to see your salesman wise data analysis, select salesperson. You want to check region wise data, select region. You want to see over here month wise records, you can select month. I repeat customer. Salesperson. Region and month. All these four checkboxes has to be on. And now when you go and click OK. You will be finding four boxes will be turned up like this. These are nothing but four different slices. Now the job is. Above to our pivot area, whatever the area we have designed over here or we have reserved for it is nothing but for this slicers to align. Now we need to bring the slicers and we have to place in this area. But how to select a slicer? See, any point of time to select a slicer, you should select by the slicer name. Don't click anywhere in the variables. So holding that name and drag it wherever you want, you can populate. So I'm taking it over here. So align it in one line. Kindly confirm once it is done. <clears throat> Ready? You start to initial. Yeah, yes, ready. Okay. Now, once we have this, see. Though we have aligned the slicers in this format, but the slicers look and feel is not so great. So when you select one of the slicer, you will be finding one slicer tab will be generated in the extreme right of your ribbon tab. Maybe the name would be different options, design or slicer. 
or slicer tools options could be. But within that, options remains the same. Only the name is slightly changed depending upon the versions of Microsoft Excel. Now in this, when you look at, there are many more styles available. So go for the more button. And in this more button, when you click it, you can notice there are two options, light and dark will be coming up. And as I told you, always go for light and medium. Here there's no medium, but yes, in this case, you need to go for dark. Reason, we need the high definition colorful buttons. So select one slicer, one color, again one slicer, one color, again one slicer, one color, and this is how you can select four different colors for four different slicers. This is the first thing you should do. Is it ready? Yes. Right. Now, though we have done the colorful changes over here, but the problem is you can notice we have got some scroll bar buttons over here in each and every slicer and having those things over here, this doesn't look great. So how to remove the same? Just say, if you select a slicer and you go to that slicer tab or options or design tab towards the right side, you'll be finding a columns option and by default this column should be showing one for everyone. Now you can increase the column number. So what will be happening? The slicers variables will start distributing to multiple columns. So now see if I'm going for three or four columns. Now ultimately this entire variables, is it turning up to four columns? Yes, but the problem is I am not able to read my data anymore. No worries. We can just take this button in the right side and little bit enhance the slicers width. Now can you see we can read all these customers names. Similarly, going to region and again take also doing three different columns. You want to do uniformly for all the columns that also possible. So it is completely up to you how many columns you want to distribute and how many columns you want to present it. It's completely your call. There is no hard and fast rule. Fine. So column distribution is over. Is it ready? Fine. Are you ready? Yes, right. Right. Now, once this is done, just watch my screen. Select one of the slicer and go for Control A. So when you press Control A, all the slicers would be in selection. Okay. 
And then in the same slicer tab, you will be finding or design or options tab. You have an option called align. You have an option called align. And in this align, if you navigate, you'll be finding an option called align top. What is that? Align top. So when you click this align top option with immediate effect from top margin, all will start distributing properly. Yes. Now again, go to align and choose distribute horizontally. Now why distribute horizontally? The reason is between the slicers, whatever the spacing, that also has to be uniform. For that reason, distribute horizontally. And once this is done, next step, don't forget, next to align, you have an option called grouping. What is that? Grouping. So when you go for this grouping tab, within grouping, you have a group options also available. So you can take that. And ultimately, what is going to happen? Entire four slicers is going to be turned out to be a single object. This is very, very essential because if you do not convert this into one object, tomorrow when you start working with your files, the I mean your pivot table data, the slicers also will be overlapping with each other. So just to safeguard the efforts, what we have made, the time, what we have spent, the formatting, what we have designed, this is very, very essential. And once this is done, now in the bottom line, if you look at there are many more spaces of empty spaces, it is there in the bottom side. Now to remove the same, you see there is a button over here in the center, in the bottom line. Take that bottom line button and take it up. But while doing so, ensure you are not regaining that vertical scroll bar button that you have to ensure. That's it. So this is what the slicers presentation part. Just check it out, confirm all these things are working. Yes, it's working. Yeah. <coughs> now, once we have this between the slicers and pivot, you see there are many more unwanted row items are there. You got to select all these rows and delete. So delete those row items. Now our slicers work is over. Pivot table is already there. Now this pivot table fields, which is there in the right side, it is no more playing a role. So go to this cross button as I'm highlighting. Go to this cross button and close this. So ultimately, my pivot table fields also will be closed. All right. Now here. Though we got the slicers ready, but as we discussed, we want a graphical presentations of our data. So keep your cursor anywhere in pivot table and you go to this pivot table analyze or analyze tab in the top. And there towards your right side, you will be finding there's an option called pivot chart. There is an option called pivot chart. So click on this pivot chart. And over here, no need to go and select any chart type, just select, go and click OK. So once you click OK, you will be finding a beautiful chart is turned up. So that chart, you can hold it and drag it and align it next to the data. And then extend it exactly to the line of our slicers. Check all these things are working.
once it is ready do let me know Are we ready? Yes. Now, take a look. The moment you have the chart in place, the beauty of pivot chart is you will be getting two ready-made filter buttons like this. Okay. You will never get such kind of filter buttons in your regular course of chart of actions. Okay. It will be happening only if you are there in pivot table. That's the beauty. So going forward, whenever you see somebody is controlling the entire chart with this kind of filter buttons, it's a similar. I mean, it's a very simple message. Those charts are created out of pivot. OK, so now the moment though we have the chart, the look and feel of chart is not so great. So to make it better, you can see what you can do is you can select the chart. There is a design button in the top will be activated. And within this design, if you see, there are many more styles also be there. Now from this style category, go to the more button. And. Choose the last one. Now why the last one? Because compared to the other styles, the last one is going to give you some glossy impact, embossing effect or some kind of shadow impact. That's why take the last style. This is the first thing you should do. Then. Though you have made better presentations people, but if you see inside the chart area, unwanted grid lines are there. So those grid lines you have to remove. How? Selecting the chart, there will be a plus symbol either towards the right side or left side. Click on that. And then a pop small pop up menu will turn up where you could see. Grid lines checkbox is on. Grid lines checkbox is on. You can deactivate this. And click the plus symbol again. So all this now from your data points will disable. OK, so this is what the chart formatting how to do. We got it. So whatever we have done so far, people, anybody can do. It's not a rocket sensor, something extraordinary. We did it. So now the time has come to discuss how to make our presentation different from others. Now take a look. Whenever you design your dashboards or this kind of stops people, remember from your interface, remove the unwanted stops like. What do you call this? Yep. For the bar. This is unwanted in our dashboard. What do you call this? Column headers. This column is unwanted. Header. What do you call this? Row headers. This is unwanted. What do you call this? Ribbon bar. This is also unwanted. So all these stuffs we need to remove. But how? Just say. If I keep my cursor anywhere in a blank cell of Excel, going to the view tab, in the view tab, you have got all these three options. Headings, grid lines, formula bar. All these three options to be disabled. OK. Now coming back to our ribbon bar. This you cannot remove it. Only thing is we can hide or unhide. And to hide and unhide the same, use Control F1. Same key to activate or deactivate, hide or unhide. Control F1. Now, when you do so, can you see when you look at your screen, what kind of feeling you are getting? 
Are you a blank template is there? I mean, blank page is there and entire template is embedding on that to get such kind of nice and clean feeling. Yes. Right. All of you clear up this, whatever we did, any difficulties, any questions? All clear so far. Yes. Right. Now take a look. What I'm going to show you something that is not mandatory. But that is optional. But if you do so, it will be an add on to your data. What is that exactly? Just watch my screen. Don't do anything. Suppose that this is what I have prepared. I'll go to my extreme right. I'll insert a row. So few rows I have inserted. OK. I'll go to insert shapes rectangle. So I have designed something like this and there I name it as sales. Dashboard. OK, and I increase my font size. Fine. Now what I'll do, I'll do some colorful presentations over here. Say I'd like to take this. And then here, say I'll go for insert. And to give some more beauty, to our reports, I will go to icon and there I'll go for chart. So some chart related, some icons I'll be getting. Suppose I believe this is somewhat looking great. I'll be using this chart. OK, insert. Now this will be added over here. I'll take it to the right side and I'll try to present it increasing this and graphics format. I'll go for some white color. Now this is somewhat looking great. Now, not only just to present this data, I would like to authenticate this data that this is not a random data. This is belong to my organization. Suppose say I am working in Tata Motors. Now what I'll do, I'll go to my Google Edge. And there Tata Motors logo. I'll be finding it and I believe this is supposed say Tata Motors. I'll take this logo. Yeah. I'll copy this. And I'll paste it. I guess it's a huge logo. Yeah. That's what is taking much of pains. So no problem. I'll just go for pick, drop it a little bit. Okay. Now picture format again, and here I will just do this. Now this Tata Motors logo, I'll fix it over here. So now this is a add-on to my data. Any point of time, whenever you design the dashboard, you can do it. So what kind of message you are giving when you put this logo? So you are claiming that this is belong to Tata Motors data. It is not a random data I'm presenting over here. So this is not mandatory. This is optional, but if you do so, 
it will be add on to your reports and people will be happy watching the same. All right. Now take a look on my screen. Being a presenter, any point of time, remember that never ever show many more information to the audience. The more the information you show, the more the questions people are going to ask. And in meeting, we do not have the whole day. We don't get time to present it. Meeting how much maximum? Uh, say 15 to 20 minutes. We get time to showcase the entire thing. So we have to be very calculative. We have to do our homework properly. Now take a look. Suppose say I am presenting this pivot table number nine. So whatever this pivot one to eight, ideally what we prefer to do, we go to hiding the same. Now if I hide it, pivot nine I'm working and I'm presenting. Suppose somebody asking something and I'm showing over here by mistake or unknowingly, my right click has enabled. And this, if it is enabled, you can notice this unhide option will be activated if something is hidden. Now, audience is smart enough to know if unhide is activated means something is hidden over here. Now, suppose say my vice president is sitting in front of me and he asked me, Pravas, why don't you click this unhide button? Can I say no? Or can I say, sir, what you are looking for is there in front of you? Why you are asking unwanted questions? So we cannot say something like this in the meeting. So now, though I do not want to show all this unwanted data, but I have no other options because people are demanding. So my core business area from pivot nine, the entire focus has gone and people started working with my unwanted data. So my presentation has gone completely into vain. So this is what you should avoid people. And my simple question is, what is the point hiding in such a way that anybody on a right click unhide your files doesn't make any sense. Hide in such a way that nobody can unhide that. Then it makes sense. What do you say? Am I correct? Yes. So yes. How, how to do that? Just watch my screen for a minute. I'll go to file. And there in the bottom, I'll be getting options. And there I'll go to advanced from my Excel options categories. I will take the scroll bar and I will drag it somewhere in the middle. I'll be getting a section called display. And within that display, a section called display options for this workbook. And the third tab, it deals with show sheet tabs. Show sheet tabs. This option is on. You got to deactivate that checkbox. And then click this OK button and trust me, you will be finding entire sheet tabs have been removed. Nobody will be ever be knowing except you. Where is your data? Where is your calculations? What is your pivot table? What is your source data? Except you, nobody will be knowing. And whatever you are presenting, people will see that only. No unwanted questions. So this is how people you must do the interface setup. Whenever you go and create a dashboard in pivot table. Hope this is working. Yes, it is working. <clears throat> right. Now take a look at my screen. When we have done with all these things, just two minutes watch my screen, no need to do anything. Now I am ready. My boss asked me, Prabhas, are you ready for presentation? I said yes. Then he has invited me to the presentation area. I went. He has greeted to all our delegates, whoever is sitting in the audience side. Then he asked me, Prabhas, please start the show. I opened this file. Then he said to me, we are not interested in watching last three years data. Just show us only 2021 records. I'll go to simply my year filter and there I choose 2021. Now, those who are interested in seeing my numbers, they will be looking at my pivot data. Those who do not have the time, but they want to make out the story, they will look at my chart. And in chart, what they can make out that from GenX Nano, we got the maximum revenue and from Sumo Gold, we got the least revenue. Anybody can make out that? Now, when I present the same, then immediately next to my boss, suppose my chief marketing officer is sitting. He asked me one thing that Prabhas, if this is the history of 2021, can you show me the performance of Salesman 5? 
So I'll go to my salesperson slicer. SM5 is there. I'll go and click that and immediately this is the story of SM5. For the year 2021, then immediately he asked one more question. What is that? If this is the history of 2021 of salesman 5, can you show me his performance for the month of May? So I'll go to my month slicer. I choose May and this is what the whole status. Only one product he has sold, Hexa. To whom? Tuli Motors. Which country? Africa. So can you see? Everything is happening on a click of button. Whoever, whatever demands on a click of button, I'm able to express. And this is how when you integrate your slicers, pivot table, pivot charts, your report is nothing but more or less like a dashboard. Check it out. All these navigations are happening. Yes, sir. So any difficulties in understanding this? So you know your data very well. You know your target audience very well. Only thing is you have to keep practicing upon the same. And trust me, when you present something like this, whoever is sitting in the audience side, they are going to appreciate your work. And somebody is definitely going to ask a question. Is this all you have prepared in Excel? Yes, because people believe all these options functionalities is possible only if you are there in Power BI. But yes, if you know the tool properly, you can do the wonders in Excel also. All right. Uh, sir, just one question. Here, uh, where I have to select? For Which year. One? Year first. For year, you have to go to this chart. Chart right side, you can see one year filter is there. I'm highlighting okay. just see. Uh -huh. There you go and select 2021. Okay, so I was selecting there in pivot table. Oh, you can do that in pivot table also, not a problem. It's working, sir. Right. Now, take a look. Once you have done with this, how to restore your data? See, if you see any of these slicers in the top right corner, you will be having a cone kind of structures, clear filter. So you have to keep pressing them and your data will start restoring. Similarly, in the chart area, if you look at that year, you have a clear filter option and your data is restored. Kindly do it. Is it done? Yes, sir. Right. Now, <clears throat> what are the other things we have to bring it back like your sheet tabs? Same option. Where to go? Keep your cursor in your blank cell. Go to our file menu. Then options. Then go for advanced from the left side category. Scroll down. You'll be getting a display section. 
where subsection is display options for this workbook. And the third tab is dealing with show sheet tabs. So that checkbox we need to activate. And click OK. So when you click OK, you can see your entire sheet tabs has been restored. So this is how we have got our sheet tabs in the place. All of you got it? Yes, sir. Right. Now, once you do so, what are the other things we have to bring it back? Like keeping your cursor near blank cell. If you look at the view tab, we have got three options deactivated. What are they? Like headings, grid lines, formula bar, all these checkboxes. Again, we have to restore. So going for view, and then grid lines, formula bar, headings. So this is how people we have understood how to create a beautiful dashboard in pivot table with combination of slicers, pivot table, and pivot chart. Any questions from anybody? You? Yes, sir. Now, take a look. I'm going to give you a very beautiful tip over here. Sometimes what it happens, though you create a very beautiful dashboard, something like this, some people will take an objection. What, where exactly? I'll tell you. Watch my screen. No need to do anything. They will say, Prabhas, everything is fine, but this data don't show. This is not looking great. And we are not interested in seeing this billions, billions, lakhs and crores. Why don't you remove that? So this is how people demand. So if I remove this, then how the other things is going to exist? Because the rest of all the things are depending upon my pivot table only. But I cannot take that and tell to the people. They are not interested to listen to me that also. So in that case, no need to waste your time. Do not be worried of like satisfying all the audience at all the time. Okay. But if some person, somebody is having such kind of unwanted demand, so how to deal with the same? Take a look. You can just disconnect your projector, take this chart, cover your data, and extend the chart like this. Done. We don't want to see the data, no. That's it. Now, which particular customer's data? Say Lexus Motors. Click on this is the Lexus Motors data. Lexus Motors, you want to know in the month of July, this is what the status of July month for all the three years. So 2019 and 2021 mole is there. 2020, there is no sales at all in Lexus Motors. Can you see how cool it is, smart way of working? Don't waste your time over here if suppose somebody is having. This is how you can manage. Cool? Clear? Yes. Right. Now come to our pivot table number six. OK, now this pivot table six holding the control button, drag it to the right. You got another pivot ready naming pivot table number 10.
Now in this, we have got our salesperson, but when I keep my cursor on pivot, this pivot table fields dialog box from the right side, it is missing. How to bring it back? Simple, right click on pivot, show fill list in the bottom, you will be finding, and your pivot table field is on. Kindly confirm, you've got your field available now. Yes, sir. Now, in this particular pivot table, salesperson work is over. You can remove this salesperson. Now, we got our one pivot table ready. So, if you notice, since afternoon, we have created many more pivot tables. And ideally, if you look at one Excel sheet, one pivot table is there. So each and every Excel sheet, they have their own unique story. And basically one pivot table is there, fine. What if in a particular sheet, you have multiple pivot tables or more than one pivot tables, then how to deal with the same? How to present our story in a beautiful format? Let's go and discuss. Now keep your cursor in the pivot table and go for Control A to select, copy that. Leaving one or two rows down, paste it. Leaving one or two rows down, paste it. Now, though we pasted people, there is no point having same information in both the pivot table. So, let's do one thing. Go to this below pivot table and deactivate your product description and bring customer to the row area. What we did in the below pivot table, product description we have removed, customer we have brought to row area. And over here to give a different feeling to those different the below pivot table, you can go to design and change the colors so that people can identify there are two different pivot table. One, product-wise last three years revenue. The other one, customer-wise last three years revenue. Can we confirm once it is ready? Yes. Now, take a look. The below pivot table, if you look at, I have taken the customer's data. Hardly I have taken 10 to 15. But technically, when you work with your real time data, your organizations might be dealing with 1000 customers. So if you take customer directly over here, 1000 line items is going to be populated. There is no point presenting your 1000 records over here. And it's very difficult to present in one window. And this is going to be too much of data overloading the things and people will not be having interest to read at all. So how to present it? First of all, this customer of 1000 customers data, do you think that people have time to go through your 1000 customer data? What's it? Yeah. So what they are expecting, what they're interested in watching, top five customers, top 10 customers, they want to see that. So what they are expecting, present that. It's not necessary. It's not mandated that you should show all the data in pivot. Okay. So now going to the customer filter. Here, see, customer filter is there. You can click that. And there you have an option called value filter. And in this value filter, if you look at over here, we have got in the bottom top 10. So when I go for top 10 over here, you can see a dialog box is there and it shows top 10. I don't want the top 10 value. I want only top five. So where 10 is there, that you change it to five and click OK and see the beauty. You will be finding only top five customers out of your entire data. Check it out.
Yes, it's working. Now, once this is done, see, in your data customer, if you look at over here, the grand total column is not showing the proper story. So keep your cursor in any value of your grand total and right click upon the same. And go for over here saying sort largest to smallest. So you can see out of your top five customers from Global Starter, we got the maximum revenue. And from Malva Auto, we got least revenue. Anybody whoever is watching my data, they can make out what I'm trying to present it. Yes, do you agree? Yes, sir. Right. Now, once we have done with this over here, come back to our product description column in the top. And there, instead of showing the entire product, we want to show only top five products. What we can do? Product description column filter, value filter, top 10, and instead top five. Click OK. So we got our top five products ready and top five customers ready. So kindly confirm both the pivot tables are ready. Yes, sir. Now between this first and the below pivot table or between the top and bottom pivot table, you see there are many more blank rows are there. So leaving one or two rows, just select the rest of rows and delete. Now, take a look. Though we have got two different pivot table people, but they have their own unique name, as I told you in the beginning. So how to explore that name? Just say, keeping your cursor in the very first pivot table, right click upon that from the bottom, second one, pivot table options. Can you see one option is there? Click on that. Now it will show you in the top, it will show you your pivot table name. So the name, whatever it is, just remember it. For me, it is showing pivot table one. For you, it may be the same or maybe different. Don't worry, just remember that name. Similarly, go below pivot table and there you check pivot table options. And again, you see, is it showing a different name? Check it out. So for me, it is pivot table number 12. For you, might be 18, 20, 25. Don't worry about it. But we have got two different pivot tables now, right? Hope you have got the clarity. Yes. Now, this pivot table fields in the right side, it is no more playing a role. You can remove this. You can just close this window. And now, keep your cursor in the first pivot table. Go to Pivot table analyze or analyze tab. There you have option called pivot chart. And click OK. Now leaving some space from the data set, just arrange this chart and align it like this. Then go on do the same for below pivot table as well. Pivot chart and click OK.
And as I told you, whenever you have the chart in place, first thing, going to design, go for the last tile, and then plus symbol, remove the grid lines. Same thing you repeat for below pivot table as well. Going to design. And plus symbol, remove the grid lines. Done, now, once this is done, I'll go for this chart. I'll select holding the control button. I'll group so that the alignment should not go off. Then once it is done, I'll go to my view tab and deactivate these grid lines so that it will be giving a kind of a template kind of feeling over here. Right now. Keeping the cursor in the first pivot table, keeping the cursor in the first pivot table, go to pivot table analyze, insert slicer. This is again nothing new. We have done the five minutes back only. And here, suppose say I want to see region wise data. I have selected region slicer out of this. Fine. Now, when I go and click OK, a region slicer will be activated. I'll keep it over here. I will just select it and all these formattings I'll do. Okay, so you know how to do that, nothing new. If you wish, you can change the colors also. You have those options from slicer and going for some dark colors if you wish. So kindly confirm once it is ready. Ready? Yes. So we grouped these two uh, charts. Two charts, but mm -hmm. it is not moving simultaneously. No, no, no. Have you grouped them? Yeah, I have grouped them. So when you see, see if you have clicked inside, then one chart will be selected. That's why it will not move. You keep your cursor outside, and once you click one chart, the first selection will be there for the entire group. And from there you can move now. If you want to move up, down, use the arrow keys. Yes, it is now. Yeah. 
So now, once this is done, let's have a look at my skin. No need to do one thing. Just see. If I want to see my data of UK, if I click UK, which pivot table and pivot chart is getting an impact? Only in the first one. Can you see that? Hmm. So what's the point? What's the point presenting our data, having a static data in the bottom like this? It will be really looking great on the clicker button if both the pivot table, both the charts will be having an impact, then it makes sense. So how to make it happen? Just say in that region slicer where the region name is there, just right click on that region name. You will be finding over there an option called report connections. And when you choose this report connections over there, it will take you to a dialog box where you could see since afternoon, whatever that pivot table we had designed, all these pivot table reports are showing. Okay. And in, in this, the below pivot table, whatever the number, that number checkbox is not activated. So technically, the slicer is connected to whichever the pivot table, that checkbox alone is on. So you have to decide now below pivot table, whatever the number name was there, that alone you have to activate. Similarly, if you want to activate for all the pivot tables, you can do that. It's up to you. So now I'm doing only for another one, which is the below and click OK. And now see the beauty. If you want UK data, this is called UK status. So only <clears throat> 2019, there is a business in UK. Top five products, top five customers. If you want to see the data of Russia, this is what the Russia data. Only 2021 records. There is no business for 2019 and 2020. If you want to see USA data, this is what USA data. So this is how people you can give a more or less a kind of a BI feeling to your pivot table data by connecting multiple pivot tables and multiple pivot charts. And trust me, this is really going to help you a lot when you want to showcase multiple information in one page. And people again, they're going to be surprised by watching this and somebody is going to definitely ask a question. Is it all you have done in Excel or you have got the report in Power BI? Entire things is in Excel. All right, check all those things are working. Yes, sir. Right. So, so we have to create uh, uh, this multiple pivots and then we can create multiple dashboards. Right. Um, Absolutely. Okay. So on one page, we have to, uh, we need to create, if we need to create uh, multiple views, then we have to create uh, multiple pivots and then we have to link like right. that. Or Right, you can create all this pivot in one sheet and those charts you can create in another sheet also. Like see, take an example. This is what I have created. Now, these two charts, I want to keep it separate. So here I want to show my only summary like this. I have retained from this pivot two. I will take these two charts. I will cut it and I will paste it. OK, this is one. Now say from pivot nine, I would like to take one more chart. Control C or Control X. I took it and here again I'm pasting it. So I have got total three charts now. You can see. Mm -hmm. But pivot tables are in three different locations, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now suppose say the chart, this entire things I want to connect with with another slicer. Suppose say take an example. I want to connect with another slicer. Over here, I kept it. Now this and this, I want to bring it in the bottom. See what you can do, I'll tell you, I'm telling you. Now, once this is ready, you can add one more, suppose say slicer, Connecting this, uh, say going to about your chart and uh, pivot chart analyze, insert slicer, and suppose say month wise, I want to analyze. I can take month, click OK, one chart is one, one slicer is ready. And this one, I will retain something like this. 
month is ready. Now I'll go to slicer. I'll convert into multiple months, something like this, and I'll change my color as well. So months are ready. You can see. Okay. Yes. Now suppose I want to operate from this, but there is no connection between all this slicer to the pivot table charts or pivot charts, right? Okay. So now what I can do, I can select this, then report connections. And is it connected to any of the pivot table? No. Now, whichever the pivot table I want to connect, say in pivot 10, one sheet is there, pivot 12 is there. So these are two pivot tables in pivot 10 sheets are there, correct? Okay. And yeah. pivot nine, one more is there, pivot nine. This is what pivot table already selected from here, right? Okay. So now when I go and operate, all these three charts are changing. Can you see that? Yeah. Right. So all these things you can do. I gave you all the individual options. Only thing is now it is up to you how you add your creativity and prepare your reports. All right. Okay, yes. yes. So for this purpose, I would suggest practice it hard because see in training, it seems like a fairy tale. Seems wow. Such things are there. Yes, it is there. But to get a hang on those topics, taking your live data, you have to practice a lot. And during practice, anything is missing. You have the recordings with you. Follow those recordings and follow those instructions. All right. Yes. Right. So any doubt, any queries for the day from anybody? Like we have only two people, Archana and uh, Isha, anybody? No, sir. Right. Fine then, so this is it from our day.